Look at that. <laughs> this is how calm it is. The water is a mirror. And we are about to tie up and hop in. All right, good morning. Welcome back. If you guys are new here, my name is Braden Sharon. I do a lot of offshore spear fishing and fishing out of my ponga boat, this rig right here, if you guys have never seen it. We have insane conditions today. There's not a breath of wind. Just that really annoying oil rig, so. With that, we're gonna run business as usual. Gonna jump in the water, do some spear fishing do some fishing and really just poke around. I don't have a big game plan. We're just gonna try to get in some fish and fill up that fish bag. It's been a while since I've gotten some fish. It's been a while since I've been diving, so I'm really wanting to get into some, some good stuff and uh, have a day of it, get some good dives in. So you guys stay tuned and let's get in. Let's do it. This is the worst part right here, getting looped up, put on a wetsuit. All right, you guys, I don't think I mentioned the intro, but Wyatt is going to be helping us film today. He was so gracious in offering to come out and help. Look at that. Talk about perfect timing. He's shooting the drone up. <laughs> it's going to be really cool, man. Hopefully we get some cool shots. It looks like we are. I mean, the conditions are really good today to really pull out the nice camera stuff and film. Quick note before we get in, we're still in state water right now. So that means we can shoot red snapper. It's closed federally. We have a year round red snapper season, so that's open. Mangrove is always open. So we got some options. So if the diving's good at these shallower rigs, we'll dive here. But if not much is going on, the water's dirty, or there's really not anything too exciting, then we'll punch out deeper. Really hoping for a big red snapper since we can't shoot them out federally right now. But I'll take any big snapper. Just not super excited about these sheep's heads so I decided to hold out and wait and see if we can find a snapper but as you can see it gets really murky down here so I can't go check out the bottom like I had hoped so I just have to post up and hope something swims up
but no luck. Send it deep. We're gonna go out and find some clear blue water. Hopefully, some cooler water. I was getting cooked diving that last rig. And it's just so warm. There's no fish around. So we're gonna send it out pretty far. It's the perfect day to do it. And the radar looks good. Skies are pretty clear for the most part. We ought to be able to get out there pretty quickly. We have made it. We are out deep. And I'm getting the cannon pre-tensioned, just in case. Let's rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Immediately after jumping in, I was expecting to see quite a bit. However, that was not the case. Here I pointed at some really big mangrove snapper hanging under that deck. But other than that, considering how much I could see with the visibility, I wasn't seeing a whole lot. But there's a lot you can miss behind the legs and stuff that you have to dive down deeper to see. So. I just started diving, scoping things out. But so far, I can't make out anything down deep nothing outside cruising by the rig all I'm seeing so far that interests me are these big mangrove snapper and then there's some smaller fish on the rig legs but those fish tend to hang around whenever I'm checking out a new area I always first look around for those more challenging or elusive thrill fish fish that are more exciting and rewarding to hunt After I really look around is when I'll round back and go after these mangrove snapper fish hanging on the rig that eat good but that I know are sticking around and that I can find at all the rigs. So after checking that section out, next I move over to the other side of the rig, area I haven't covered yet, and I'm just going to go down a good ways to a horizontal beam, and I'm just going to set up and scope out the deep. So now I'm posted up and you can see I'm just glassing around. And boom, a nice Kubera comes up, checks me out and then flicks back down. Did not stay up for any time at all, but really cool. That's one of those wild possibilities that you can come across out here. And that's one of those exciting fish that 
we'll get your blood pumping. However, that fish was deep, and it only came up for a split second. And by the way it acted, it is not going to show itself again, at least any shallower, that's for sure. Saw a cub. So by just the way that fish reacted to seeing me, I figured there wasn't much of a shot of us seeing it again. And even if we did, it had shown itself really deep. So it wasn't even going to be a situation that was practical to get involved in. There was too great of a chance of not being able to land it. So we just kept covering ground, going to really look through the rest of the rig and then after that, we'll start shooting to get some meat in the boat. So now I've checked out the entire rig and I decide it's time to start putting some meat in the boat. So. I unload one of the bands on my gun and decide to go after a rock hind grouper that I spotted on the rig leg. Those big mangroves really pushed down deeper. I didn't feel like going through the hassle for a mangrove, so sticking a little bit shallower here, going for a rock hind. a giant rock hind down there but I was being lazy and uh, waited too long. I was sinking too far at it so I was trying to slow myself and just get a nice pretty shot for the camera but that motion spooked it off and this is what was left. Not a giant fish but that's still a really good, good little taco. Quite a big gun for a little fish. It's called versatility. We're in 220 foot of water. Everything seems to be deeper than 100 feet. <laughs> At least the crazy stuff. There's some big mangroves. Um, I saw that Kubera, but he just saw me, looked at me, went back down. Didn't hang around. Big one? Yeah, nice. Might have to shoot that.
bunch of sharks down there. And all the big rainbow runners I want to shoot are right around the sharks. <laughs> Sharks moved off for a second, so I figured I'd be able to do it. Gosh, this thing is bigger than I thought. Kudos coming in hot, had to bring it in quick. That is a beast. It doesn't even look that big because all the other ones are like this. Look at that. Top grade sashimi beat right there. I'm actually really, really pumped about this. Going straight into ice. Okay, is there a sharp fillet knife around here? Slice up this cuda for chum. I just shot him right in the brain. <laughs> Put him to sleep. Let's see how this knife does. Oh yeah. Like butter. Cutting easy. Brain's gonna love all this slime. Oh, get an amberjack up. <laughs> all right, so we had moved spots. A big rainbow runner school came in. Got a really nice one, and now I went to go check out the rig. I hadn't looked around yet. So I check everything out, and then after that, I decide I'm going to shoot something, and I spot this big lionfish. So I go over to it, give it a little nudge so I don't smash my spears bad. little tickle works, and... We put a spear in it. That right there is an invasive fish species. Good to eat, but you got to be careful of those spines. They are poisonous, so that's why I'm not handling the fish here. I don't even want to grab it. It's still green. A lionfish. Yeah. Face only a mother could love. If you guys aren't familiar with lionfish, if you get poked by one of these spines, you are in trouble. So that's why I'm really trying to avoid getting poked. We're a long way from shore. I'm gonna spin over here because he's got some colors that are showing up. Here he comes again. Look at him. Fisher is saying that there are some snapper four sides coming up. But when you chum, things like that happen too. Oh, 
we literally just yeah, had to poke him with the knife. big one man yep so we've got all these spinner sharks around but I'm pretty confident in shooting a rainbow runner as long as I can secure it quickly I've had a lot of experience around spinner sharks and that's why I'm confident in doing this so here I grab that line to secure it but that extra pressure causes it to rip off if I hadn't tried to bring it in a shark would have most likely grabbed it and it would have riled them up a lot so then here a sandbar shark comes in these are typically a bit more bold than the spinner sharks so i just decide to give the rainbow runners a break i head into the rig and look for something to shoot here Dropped right into some nice mangrove snapper there, and I was able to make quick, efficient work. Speared and secured really quickly. Seemed to completely stay off the shark's radar there. If you can't get your hands on them, these mangroves can really thrash around, and those sharks will haul in really quickly. decided to do it. Boom. Look at that. Good. Dick. Delicious mango. So while the chum wasn't doing what Fisher had intended it to do, it needed to get down deeper and get through all these fish eating it, it did keep the rainbow runners around, so I kept shooting them. Just gotta get this fish out of the water as soon as we can to keep it away from the sharks. Just have to be smart about it with the sharks around these spinners. Like I said, you can shoot around them, but you, you really want to secure that fish as fast as you can because they can turn and come onto that fish. I'm just playing the behavior of them. Like I said earlier, I've been around them a lot, so. Just 
picking my moments, picking my shots carefully. But you see here, I grab that line, I'm trying to force this thing in as quickly as I can. This one was fighting pretty hard. This was not an ideal fight. I want to get that fish in a lot quicker with a lot less thrashing, but I waited for those bigger sharks to get further away and that's my shot so I was able to secure it. Going in the box. We ended up moving spots. This was a lot less sharky right off the bat and I saw some more rainbow runners so I decided to stick one more. Reached out there with the roller this time. Those sharks were far off so I didn't have to secure this thing as fast. They stick around. Solid rainbow runner. So since we moved spots, it was time to check out this new area. I made a series of dives and I was just glassing, going down like I did in the beginning of the video when we were diving. Seeing what's going on at this rig, seeing what's hanging out. Big school of mangrove snapper over there that I just pointed at. And here I just make another line dive. And I'm just gonna let this one run raw like you're in the moment. the fish. I got my gun. I am busted open. Oh, there's blood going everywhere. What just happened? Watch where you're swimming. Or this will happen. Permit. I saw it. Or it there. was. I saw it before he shot. I was like, it looks like a permit. He shot him. I was like, oh, I And blood. the sharks came in and destroyed him. I couldn't stop them. Those permits, they take off so so fast. Those down there, I don't know how deep, but those were deep. Give me the spear and the fish. Where's the spear at? I got it. Dude. Dude, you're dumping blood. That would have been Bro, pushing 20 pounds. 
That's a big one, or was. It's bigger than the last one I speared. I'm trying to see what we're, we're dealing with here. Yeah, you got a good little cut there. You were in like, it's not bad. you know, if you're in like the. Thankfully, my mask didn't break and my GoPro just broke it off. Yeah. Did he even? Yeah, it went through, but it pulled, almost pulled out when that shark got him. This rad. You can see the teeth marks. So if you missed that, this permit took off like a bat out of hell. I grabbed the line trying to slow it down. And then this spinner shark darts in the rig. Next thing I know, it's on the permit and now I'm fighting the shark. So I'm kicking as hard as I can towards the surface, but I'm not getting any closer to it because this shark is way too strong. But I really want this fish. This is the coolest fish I had speared all day. So I hold on. I keep fighting and thankfully the shark finally lets go with just the tail so I have a good hunk of this fish and I'm able to swim up but now I'm gassed I'm trying to get up quick I was on the way up trying to fight the sharks off this permit all the effort kind of made me you know have to breathe you know I exerted a lot more energy so I'm starting to fin up faster Fisher saw me coming up pretty quick and he went down to meet me and grabbed my gun, and while he was taking my gun, I wasn't even thinking about looking up. And uh, that happened, so. man in the boat right now decided to take a little break after that permit we got Fisher and Wyatt in the water they're just getting done at another spot and we're probably gonna hit another rig or two probably just one rig honestly and run in we got quite a ride back and I'm pretty happy with the fish we've got a bunch of good eaters got my trophy of the day half of a permit but it came with a price. Is that mass still fogging or is it a little bit better? Eh, it's fogging, but definitely better. <coughs> Guess what I saw on my first dive? A permit. I almost shot an African pompano. Are you serious? Yeah, dude. He, he was turning towards me. How was, far? He's probably 10 or 12 feet a little too So far. shooting range. Oh, 10 or 12 too far. Too far. Okay. So I, take that I knew I couldn't shoot him on the edge of the raft because he would just rip out. So I, I didn't pressure him. That's why I dove again, but he was gone. Dude, they come in and they're gone. That's exactly what happened to me earlier yep. this summer. Yep. Well, at least you got to see one. We'll go to the next rig and look. But we got to make quick work because it's getting late. And what? Gotta make quick work of it because it's getting later. Yeah. Yeah, we'll make. Dude, if you got an AP. Dude, I, that's why I was like, man, I hope he's there. Shot at redemption, right? <laughs> Literally a shot at redemption. Shot at redemption from a year ago. At the next spot here, dove around the rig for a bit, looked around, and Fisher came up from a dive and said he saw what he thought were more African pompano. But honestly, I wasn't completely sold on it because I had also been diving and hadn't seen any sign of them, which 
is completely possible. I mean, these African pompano come through and you can see them and then they're gone. But what we were or what I had been seeing were big look downs. So I thought maybe he had just seen one of those. Inside the rig here, there was a couple schools and several of those look downs were considerably large for their species. So I figured maybe he got them confused seeing them at a distance, thinking it was an African pompano. But I went down to check it out. I look all around the outside of the rig. And all I see are these look downs. There's a school over there in that corner. So I'm not sure. It's totally possible he did see one, but I just thought maybe he had just seen some really big look downs. Look downs. What? Look downs. So I think he just saw look downs, but I decided to just keep making dives here on the edge of the rig because I hadn't seen really anything super exciting on the inside. And I did remember that previous dive, whenever I dove, I kept myself facing outwards. And in the past, when I've had African pompanos really come in to check me out, it was after I had been turned away like this, inward toward the rig. So I do that here and hold it for a second. And after I wait, then I turn around. And what do you know, I finally turn and there are quite a few African pompano with a giant up here in the front coming right in. But I freaking missed. Held up a two there. I thought I needed an extra app of line and that it was too far. But turns out I just let it too much. As soon as I pull the trigger, the fish wheels back the other direction, and I can't tell if the spear glanced off of it or a clean miss, but did not connect. Since that fish was a bit further out, I was trying to hold a little bit farther forward so it would swim right into the spear and I'd get a solid headshot, but it completely juked the spear. Damn, I need two wraps of line. AP. Oh, yeah. Hey, Fisher, big school of AP. Boom. That was actually the first African pompano I'd ever shot at before. And considering it was a giant one, I was feeling pretty sick about it. I thought I blew my only opportunity I would have of the trip. And probably for a long time, I rarely see these things. And even when I do, that was the first one I'd ever have come into range. So that'll kind of give you a perspective on it. But all I knew I could do was keep diving and hope I see more and to my surprise the very next dive this happens First ever speared African pompano. Took my time with that shot there and 
we were able to connect but I knew the shot was high I thought that fish was further away so I let it run but then it took a turn and actually went into the rig and I felt the resistance of the rig so I started pulling it I didn't know how deep that fish was and I didn't want to get tangled up so thankfully I'm able to work it out and now I'm just worried about that shot I know it hit high but I'm not sure exactly what it looks like so I'm working this fish real easy letting it run when it pulls and just slowly trying to work it up and then here I see that shot looks like it's barely on and with this fish still being green, I was like, Fisher, we need a second shot. So thankfully, he gets over in time and he goes down to put another one in this to secure it. I was for sure gonna lose this thing. He's barely on. <laughs> about that I'm just glad I got a second opportunity after that first run in it's not the ideal side of the boat to get in on but uh, this is nothing compared to the other ones yeah the other ones were giant that one I shot at was probably 30 pounds these are the ones with the sickles. These are, that means they're smaller. Dude, the one I shot at was giant. I shot at a 30 pounder. But the, I saw them, I saw a different school the next dive. So I would get that restrung. Let's get back in and see if we can find another one real quick. Because this is not happening every day. I thought I was for sure going to lose this thing. I went real light on the drag. Thankfully, uh, he wore out fast. AP's on deck! <laughs> Went into the rig, I started feeling like no drag, and I was like, uh oh. Thankfully, it didn't get all tangled up. But that right there is my first AP. These things taste amazing as well. Super good sashimi, ceviche. Unreal. Dude, late afternoons, they come out to play. I don't know what it is. Every time I've ever seen them, it's late in the afternoon. All right, I'm gonna get all this line reeled up. 
I went really light because that shot was not ideal. So after I got resituated, it was getting late, but I just could not help myself. We jumped back in to make some more dives, see if we can find some more African pompano. Here's a clip of Fisher going down. But we did not see any more cruising through. And it was about time that we had to head back. We had a long roll back. But Fisher decided he wanted to go back into the rig. Before we leave, he said he saw a big lionfish. So he brought the selfie stick camera down and check this out. Drilled him. Number two of the day. Another invasive off the rigs. That's a way to end the day right there. Straps coming kind of away. Look at this. We got some honk mangroves. Oh, I gotta watch out for the lionfish. I forgot bunch of big rainbow runners. The traumatizing event for me. <laughs> Watching the biggest permanent I've ever seen getting munched. And then the grand finale. That's why today neat quality is pretty on point there. But yeah, that's gonna do it. My head's throbbing. It's getting late. We got a long, we got a long run back, and uh, we got a full fish bag. So that's gonna do it. I will catch y'all back at the dock cleaning these fish. I was gonna say we paid some of our taxes. Actually, I think it was a big spinner shark. Got a lot of meat on them. It might have been a good thing that that shark came in and ate his tail. This fish was about to take off, like he had already started. And uh, these things are, are strong. <laughs> 